Today is March 17th, and we are reading from uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I love this chapter. It teaches us a lot. It uh, helps us to even see some of the highlights of the, the Bible heroes in the Old Testament. And it starts out with a definition of faith. He says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And so then he goes into kind of this list of people who had faith in him and followed him and were great examples, even in the midst of their, uh, their brokenness. We remember that every one of us is not perfect. However, uh, later on in the chapter, we learn also that it's Jesus who makes us perfect. It's his blood that covers us and makes us perfect. But uh, we, we see about Abel um, and Cain and um, how Abel, uh, God spoke well of his offerings because of his faith. Enoch, um, he was commended um, as one who pleased God. And it says right there, and without faith it is impossible to please God. And then Noah, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. He uh, had faith that God was truthful in what he was saying he was going to do. And he, he obeyed, even though when he didn't know what was going to happen. Um, uh, Abraham, he obeyed even though he didn't know where he was going to go. God told him to go, and, and he just got up and followed God. Um, and all these people, he says right there in verse 13, he says, all these people that I'm talking about, they were all still living by faith when they died. Wow, what a cool thing to have written right here. They died, and they were still living uh, in obedience to God. And God had planned something better for every person um, so that only together with us we would, they would be made perfect. And that's Jesus. He made every one of them perfect before his sacrifice um, because of what was going to happen through his sacrifice. So we are made perfect because of his sacrifice for us. And so what do we learn? We, what do we learn in this chapter about God? First of all, God is pleased when he sees us display our faith. When we act in faith, trusting his promises, obeying his commands. Each of these Bible heroes did just that. And God is pleased. It's said several times through there, he commended this person. He was pleased with this person. He uh, called this person righteous. All these things, he loved it because of their acts of faith. What do we learn about people? First of all, people are capable of pleasing God. That's, that's great. That's awesome. How re encouraging. In, in our surrender and uh, of control and action of obedience, we are able to display faith. But without the Holy Spirit, we're unable to do any of that. It's the Holy Spirit who produces all of that. And so that's cool about, about people. What are some next steps? Uh, first of all, remember that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That first verse is so powerful. It's a definition of faith. I think it's a super awesome definition of faith. I would I want you to take this as a next step. Memorize Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Take it through this weekend, whatever you need to do to take time to memorize that verse and have it in your heart so that you have a definition of what faith is. We need to know uh, what, what things are before we're actually completely able to, to fulfill those things. And so your faith is taking action it is being confident um, and being sure, even though you may not know where God is leading you. 
Um, second action um, step here is uh, to be actively obedient uh, to God and go when you don't know where you, the Lord is leading you and expect that he's going to do great things through your obedience. So take those next steps. Be obedient to God. Remember what these people in the faith, how they took next steps and God was pleased with them. And the same thing will be about you. He will be pleased in your obedience and your faithfulness to his, his call on your life. Let's go ahead and read together Hebrews chapter 11. It says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when he learned about things not, not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world that became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith Abraham, when called to go to the place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he didn't know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him in the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past bear, childbearing age, she was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he is good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They didn't receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had sent him, it is it is through Isaac that your offering will, offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead so that in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he learned, leaned on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he, his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the, Christ of, the sake of Christ as of greater value 
than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she, was, she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. What more shall I say? I don't even have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and, and Samuel and Japheth and David and Samuel and the other prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and whose power became in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain even a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two and were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goat skins and destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much that uh, we have the opportunity uh, to trust in a God who has the power of the universe with that much power, your love uh, could crush us. Your power could overcome us. And it, it certainly certainly has that, that uh, power. But Father, we are thankful that we can trust you, knowing that you have our best interest in mind. Father, I pray that you help us in that trust that we completely believe, we completely have faith, we act out in our faith by obeying your commands, by being bold in our faith and going where you call us to go, to say what you call us to say through your Holy Spirit. May the people that we come into contact with um, hear your, your truth hear the name of Jesus and the, the name of Jesus is made famous in our lives and the people around us know that we are followers of him because, uh, because of what you've done for us. We have that capability to follow you, to be called yours. So Father, help us in our faith. Help us to believe so much that we want others to believe, that we want to call uh, and invite others into your family. Thank you for this passage and for this week together and just the, these few chapters of Hebrews reminding us what Jesus has done. May you go with us and through this weekend, may we keep our eyes on, on you and that we be looking for opportunities that you're going to put right in our path to take for your kingdom. Now, Father, help us to be faithful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, church, until we see you again, you are sent.